It's wonderful. It's wonderful to be with you. Let me welcome to the stage Dr. David Hill, who we all know and love. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be with you. You know, I was backstage and I was listening to uh, Corey speak, and it's hard not to get excited about doTERRA. Would you agree? No. <laughs> Let me ask again. It's hard not to get excited about doTERRA. Would you agree? You know, I have to say before I get started this afternoon, I, I sometimes hear some of the messages that we share, which are really focused in who we are and what we've accomplished already. And it feels a little bit overwhelming at times. And so on behalf of myself and all of my partners, we thank you. We thank you for all of your efforts in being a part of this great work with us. We're very grateful. Now, I'm going to build a little bit on some of what Corey talked about. He touched just briefly on health care. And I know you've been hearing a lot of messages about health care over the last months and even the last year and a half or two years. A great deal of effort has gone into our health care initiative. And from this point forward, we're going to announce a lot of very exciting things to you and share more meaningful information with you. But I would like to pose a question before we do that. Even though we've recognized and we understand that we're going to make this change in health care, there's an imposing question that always remains, why? Why would doTERRA participate in that? Why would we want to do that? Well, I think Corey revealed some of that messaging for us when he talked about all the initiatives we have in the, co in the company and all the differences that we've made in all the things that we've participated in within doTERRA. Right from the very beginning, and you all know this and have experienced this in your own way, we were not looking to do and had no desire to be like everyone else in the marketplace. We needed to redefine what essential oils were. We needed to reposition essential oils. And as a part of that, we also have increased the awareness, not just in a public sense, but within the scientific and within the medical communities. And so one of the primary reasons why we are choosing to focus on healthcare is because we feel like we have a great purpose in doing that that goes beyond some of the more obvious things that we've talked about. I'll give you an example. In the last 10 years since doTERRA has been formed, research, peer-reviewed studies on the essential oils and the value that comes from that has increased by more than 400% in the last 10 years. We went from very small, unknown amounts of information to very broad and extensive amounts of inf information. And we are just on the cusp. We are just learning what we need to know more fully about the essential oils outside of our own personal experience. Now that carries with it some direct responsibility, which I think is important for us to recognize. And although it may not be the sole purpose of our doing healthcare in doTERRA, it remains one of the primary drivers. And that is that we have been concerned and we have been focused on not just increasing awareness, but changing the understanding of essential oils. Would you agree with me? And we have done that now in science and in medicine. And if we don't continue that movement forward, if we don't continue in the element of discovery and sharing that information in a meaningful way, it will be redefined differently than how doTERRA has defined it. Now, in addition to that, when we look at our own models of health, and this remains very important, there's a rule in medicine which is commonly referred to as the 80-20 rule. And that is that about 80% of your health needs, those things which you'll experience on an ongoing basis for yourself and your family members with your health, 80% of that you would be perfectly capable of being able to resolve if you had the right information and if you had the right tools. This is what doTERRA has focused on from the very beginning empowering you and those that you care about and giving you the ability to reach out to others and help them to solve, in some cases, everyday challenges with health, but even more difficult and serious challenges at times. That holds true, and that is a purpose and a value that's been fundamental to who we are in doTERRA. And that will never change. However, there is about 20% of our health that we do need some extra help with. 
This is a direct reflection of what you see in the health pyramid, which we've talked about many, many times. That there are many things which we can do to be empowering, but there are times where we need to take advantage of the skill and the expertise as it lies within healthcare. And so having a focus in healthcare as we move forward will help us to more fully accomplish that. In order to be able to do that most effectively, something that we have done from the very beginning in doTERRA, and you'll remember as we defined the mission of doTERRA, one of the clear points that we defined was to have the ability to bring organized medical care in a united fashion together. Eastern and Western modalities, things that at one time were considered alternative, but now are being considered completely mainstream. Things that you and I participate on a daily basis. That has meant that we have associated and affiliated with many great institutions and with many individuals as the years have gone on. Many of you are familiar with our board that we have worked with, comprising of both scientists and physicians for a number of years in different methodologies and in different applications of how we might use the essential oils most effectively. A little over six years ago, I had the good fortune of meeting an individual that you know, Dr. Brannick Riggs. We love Dr. Riggs. He has focused and dedicated himself exclusively to understanding and knowing about the essential oils. A couple of years ago, we had the good fortune of having him come and join us at doTERRA. And from that time, he has been focused exclusively on our healthcare initiative and has done a remarkable job, remarkable job in helping us to overcome many of the obstacles, helping us also to understand how we might fully participate within the medical environment. Dr. Riggs currently is serving as our medical director and vice president of clinical operations. Can we give him a big hand? I know that many of you know him, and you love your experience and your time with him, as do I. He has become a trusted colleague and somebody who I rely on heavily. Because of his strength, because of his great ability, I would like to give him another opportunity beyond what he's currently doing, and I am appointing him today as the chairman of our medical board. Congratulations, Dr. Brannick. Now, I have no doubt that he'll carry our initiatives forward and will continue to integrate all of those things in a wonderful way as he has done previously. Now, it would be nice to think that we could accomplish everything that we need to with a limited few. But we have need always, as has been the case in the terror from the very beginning, that wonderful individuals have come and joined with us. It's been interesting to us, as we've seen, as that has happened, they always seem to come at the right time. They always seem to come when critical need has been identified. And where we've had the need or the necessity has surfaced for us to be able to move beyond where we currently were. And so I'd like to introduce another individual to you today. You may have heard of him, you maybe have not heard of him. His name is Dr. Russell Osgathorpe. Now, I've, I've noticed that everybody is referring to him now as Dr. O, and that's because nobody can say Osgathorpe. But if you practice, you will be able to say that. You'll notice that his title is now Chief Medical Officer. And I'd like to offer some explanation as to why that is and why we feel that is a critical thing. In the beginning of doTERRA, that's a title that I've carried now for a number of years, which has been a great enjoyment for me. It's been a great pleasure. In doTERRA, that title has many different definitions. It means that this individual's focused in on all of the sciences and all of the development that we do with products and other things and quality within doTERRA. I've enjoyed carrying that title, but as we enter into now this new frontier with healthcare, we need to redefine that title just a little bit in doTERRA. In medicine, being a chief medical officer is kind of the highest rank that you can go to. And because of the needs that we have and the things that we're addressing in medicine, it makes sense that I bestow that title upon him. And let me give you a couple of reasons why I feel like that's so imperative. Now, I make it sound like he knelt before me and I pulled out my sword and I said, oh, I bestow upon you, chief medical officer. It's not quite like that. And I, I want to give a little bit different impression in an image, and that is that one of the things I've loved in doTERRA as owners, as partners, we collaborate together. 
we have multiples of discussions, not only about meeting individual needs, but meeting collective needs and meeting the needs for the company. And so when I say me, I mean we as an ownership team. And a couple of the discussions that we had as we were focusing in on this was our need to be able to continue to have partnership. We've worked with many different institutions over the years in doTERRA. We've worked with multiples of hospitals and research labs and many others, all of which have contributed to and helped us to understand what we now know and have brought us to the point where we now are. But we're right at the frontier. We're right at the beginning of that. You'll remember last year at convention, I redefined CPTG just a little bit. I talked about analytical chemistry, but then I also talked about biological chemistry. The need to know and discover proper dosing, to know pathway, to know the effect of how the essential oils are working, to allow us, Corey did a wonderful job of talking with you about where our product development will go in the future. All of these play a critical role in us being able to accomplish that in the way that you would expect us to. Now that, of course, is coupled with clinical research, knowing and understanding more, to do research beyond what we currently have done. Last year was a banner year for us. We published 23 peer-reviewed studies in doTERRA. doTERRA did that. Two of those were very basic, but yet human clinical trials. This is where we need to continue to push and to discover, and it requires great mind and great strength. And so it's my privilege to be able to invite Dr. Russell Osgothorpe to carry the title of Chief Medical Officer within this company. And I believe that with he and many others who will continue to come to doTERRA, will continue to achieve the growth and the opportunity that Corey just spoke so eloquently about. Now that might mean that you're thinking, what does that mean for me? I've heard a number of different things. I told my partners the other day, I told Mark Wolford, I said, if even one more person comes up and hugs me and says, we're really going to miss you, but we wish you well, I think I am just going to retire for the spite of it. I'm not retiring. I'm not going anywhere. Now, this means that I... I get to carry now a wonderful opportunity going forward as I act as a chairman of all of our scientific and medical initiatives. And I now work with all of these wonderful individuals where I can continue to have influence, but where I also can receive of their strength. And we can direct that for a greater good within doTERRA. So none of us really get the opportunity to walk away. We only get the opportunity to work with more people. And I'm looking forward to that and love each of these gentlemen and all of the individuals and the scientists and many others whom I get to work with and will continue to work with move, moving forward. Now, do you remember at convention last year? One more quick announcement as I finish up. Do you remember at convention, I think it was not last year, it was two years ago, I gave a, uh, a uh, presentation entitled Back to the Basics. Do you remember that? Yeah. Apparently it was really impactful. That's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I uh, will never give that presentation again, and my work here is done. This was a really pivotal thing. One of the things I heard Corey say was that we actually do more education now than what we've ever done in the whole history of doTERRA. He is correct. However, would you agree with me that the framework of some of that education has maybe morphed and changed a little bit? We went from saying, and do you remember the good old days where these are the types of presentations I and others would give, where we would talk with you about cancer and inflammation and all of these other things, and we would tell you how to use the essential oils. Do you remember those good old days? Do you remember when we'd stand up and be very directive in the things that we were saying instead of standing up and saying, the oils will make you feel happy, and if you diffuse them, they'll elevate your mood? Do you remember those good old days? Would you like to go back to those good old days? So I had a, been talking with Dave Sterling for a while now, and one of the things I approached him with as we were talking is that, Dave, I, I think I could commit a year to this type of initiative. And what is this type of initiative where maybe we look at oils and body systems, we learn how to classify the essential oils, 
we learn about the daily use of essential oils again. Would you like to have workshops where you learn how to use and make blends and you come and you get your hands dirty and you use the essential oils? Would you like to be able to take all of that information and have it available to you so you can share it with other people? Would you like us to start having evening meetings again that are focused on education of essential oils? Would you like that? No, 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 no. Would you like that? So I told Dave that, Dave, I can commit a year to that. And then I went back to him a few weeks later and I said, Dave, uh, I can commit probably two years to that. And then I, last week in Atlanta, I couldn't help myself. I announced three years to everybody. So we're going to do that for the next three years. Now, I've been focused internationally with a lot of the things that I do. For the last almost six years, I have been exclusively in the international markets with the exception of a few post-convention cities. So where am I going to go? U.S. and Canada. That's where I'm going to be for the next three years. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about the opportunities that we have ahead of us.